hey guys and welcome back to another video hope you are having a great day on that side of the screen and today to take a look at the nvidia rtx 3070 ti which is right over here kfa2 serious gaming edition And we are back so before we talk about this gpu which in my opinion at this moment price to performance is probably one of the best not talking about all of the technology that is in one of these rtx 3070 ti and all across the 3000 series which you have seen here from the 3060 up to 3080 this one is right in the middle between 3070 and 3080 but at this moment i guess that the prices are more or less across the globe and one thing that it's great is to see that the prices are going a little bit to the normal side and in my opinion before we start this video if you are on the market for a mid-range to top range cards then the price to performance at this moment i would go for the 3070 ti just because the price is almost the same as the 3070 but having an increase of performance of about 10 to 15 percent and the difference of 10 to 15 percent to reach the 3080 price difference from the 3070 to the 3070 ti is a very low while the difference from the 3070 ti to the 3080 is quite a bit so in terms of price to performance here it is and when we look at the specifications we will find the 3070 3070 ti and 3080 with a difference in terms of everything obviously but could of course we are talking about 5888 for the 3070 6144 for the 3070 ti and 8704 for the 3080 so quite a few differences right over here and we will see that difference and some gaming and also on productivity software that we might use now when we look at the memory we will find 8 gigs for the 3070 and 8 gigs for the 3070 ti both with 256 bit but while the 3070 had GDDR6 the 3070 ti has GDDR6 X exactly the same as the 3080 of course the 3080 has 10 gigabytes at 320 bit now in terms of bandwidth we are talking about 448 gigabyte per second on the 3070 608 on the 3070 ti and 720 on the 3080 so as we can see the 3070 ti is right there in the middle and in my opinion a great purchase now KFA2 designs some really nice GPUs. In terms of build quality, it's one of the best that I've seen. And I'm not talking only about the technology because NVIDIA technology will be found on most of the GPUs on the market, regardless of the brand. But I'm talking about the build quality itself, the software and the cooling, if it's silent or not. And yes, KFA2 has been improving a lot they had great products since the beginning but they keep improving and improving now in terms of the software itself they have the extreme plus that you will have to download if you are using the new 3070 ti and it just works great now we can change a lot of settings on our desktop which is just great but but my favorite one is when we use our mobile phone with the app and even if I'm gaming or doing something else on the computer, I can just grab my phone and change colors, for example. I can change the fan settings. I can change overclock settings. I even have the great feature of one-click overclock, which is just awesome if you want to overclock your GPU safely with just one click of course there's also an option where you can scan and the system will be scanned for the best settings so you don't have to mess with manual settings and this can be all done on the extremer plus app 
either on the phone or on the desktop. If you ask my opinion, I prefer to do it on the phone. Now, in terms of the cooling solution, we have three 92mm fans right over here. They are very silent. And of course, if you ramp them up to 80% or 100%, you will hear them, but you won't need. Now, on all my tests, and of course, I have an open rig, but I also played around with closed cases. And the maximum that I was getting was 60 degrees, pushing really hard for the GPU. And the GPU not even ramped up to 80 or 90 percent we are talking about the fan ramping up to 60s 60 somethings just to keep those 60 degrees celsius which is just awesome if you push the gpu on the fans to 80 percent or 100 percent it will cool down the gpu to about 40 to 50 even pushing it out so these are two things in conjunction the nvidia power management and cooling solution and of course the cooling solution designed by kfa2 so these two factors make this beast of a gpu a really silent and quiet and of course Cool GPU and not only cool by its look but cool on the temperature. Now it also has one thing that we have seen in the past on other top GPUs from KFA2 which is the one clip booster and that's a smaller fan on the back which instead of pushing uh, fresh air uh, from the front which is the case of these three right over here the clip one booster will push the hot air from the back plate or the dissipator to put it away and keep on coming fresh air moving the hot air from the back so this will depend on the setup that you use on this particular case for example you won't need it. it's an open rig but if you have a close uh, a closed case which is normal and you don't have a nice airflow then it will be great it will dissipate a few more degrees on your gpu without any effort now before we move on to the tests benchmarks and gaming tests what i want to share with you is if you are looking for a gpu that is capable of doing 1080 everything on top then the 3070 ti is more than capable if your display is 1080 then you will be just fine just max out everything and you will be able to play on the maximum possible graphics with frames per second on the roof now if we move to 2k what we will be able to do is to play very comfortable all the games or most of the games without changing a few things and playing with the graphics on the maximum sometimes probably will tweak here and there and you will have also frames per second on the roof so that is the target of this GPU but the question is can it play 4k and that's just because the displays that I've got in my hands these days are all 4k so why not take advantage of the 4k resolution and the answer once again is yes now will we need to sacrifice a few things here and there yes but in my opinion totally acceptable and I will share with you in just a few moments now starting with the benchmarks in 3d mark we will get 14,855 which is a great score and you can see by some images on screen just to compare with other systems Unigine Valley which is a older test but great to compare to all the generations we are talking about a average score of 93 frames per second of average by the way all the tests were done in 4k so just don't forget that when you compare with other results now in terms of the unigine superposition we are talking about more or less the same 90 frames per second on average with the preset 4k optimized and then moving to gaming which is the more interesting part especially for those that love to play some games with really great graphic at a high resolution so going to fortnite and starting with 4k at high preset ray tracing which is just awesome on games that have reflections and shadows and of course the lss on so that we can improve our frame rate while maintaining great graphics we are talking about 40 to 50 frames per second and yes you will tell me hey robots i am a hardcore player so this is not enough for me okay so if we lower in this particular case Fortnite maintaining graphics on high ultra high 2k then we will reach 70 to 90 frames per second and in my opinion this is acceptable but if you want to increase the frame rate then you will start to tweak and this is the point that I wanted to 
reach earlier, which is we will need to sacrifice here and there small things to reach more frames per second while maintaining a 2K or especially a 4K resolution with all the details on the graphics. And Fortnite is a good example on that. Now moving to Forza Horizon 4, which is a really nice game in terms of graphics, in terms of gameplay, in terms of everything. I really love that game just to benchmark so that you can compare with similar games because this is a, a racing game but heavy one and you will be able to play it at 4k with everything on ultra 86 frames per second no worries at all so if you like to enjoy your games on your big screen tv on your living room and having one of these beasts right then you will be able to play at 4K with a great frame per second score. Now moving to Watch Dogs, which is a different game, a little bit more heavy on the graphics side. I love it when we enable ray tracing and DLSS, and in this particular case playing at 4K with very high graphics. And I was reaching more or less 65 frames per second on most zones, which is very comfortable for this kind of game but if you want a little bit more then just uh, reduce the preset from very high to high maintaining everything the only thing that I did change was ray tracing to medium and DLSS to ultra performance and I could achieve easily on 4k 85 to 100 frames per second so these are the tweaks that we will need to do right over here to get the best out of the 3070 Ti in terms of the gameplay and of course of, in terms of frames per second and the high resolution and high textures of the game. Now the next game is one really interesting game especially for the graphical aspect and some of you will dive into the game and be immersed but it's not my case. I do enjoy the game for the things that it offers and in terms of graphics, in terms of ray tracing technology, I don't get tired to share and say that it's just awesome and it's different from night and day. Minecraft, which is a game that to me doesn't mean much personally, when I enable ray tracing, I can play that game. I can see myself playing that game without any issues. Just awesome technology. You will see the water details, the shadow details, and it's, ju it's just a completely different game. Now, lastly, to wrap up, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a different game, but really nice, nice story, nice graphics. And starting with 4K on Ultra Eye preset, once again, we will reach more or less the 54, 55 frames per second on the 50s range. So it's a different game from Watch Dogs and a different game from Fortnite, but a lot of you play this game and here are the results. Now, if you want to reach higher, and I do believe that you want a little bit more while maintaining the 4K, the only thing that we will need to do is to lower from ultra high to very high, which will just get will maintain a lot of the details on the game, and you will be able to reach from 65 to 75. If you lower to high, then you will reach easily the 100 frames per second without changing the resolution on 4K, which is just awesome. It's just awesome experience on 4K. And that is it, guys. In terms of conclusion, for the 3070 Ti, which in my opinion, in terms of position, in terms of price to performance at this moment of the recording, is the best charge instead of the 3070 or the 3080. And in terms of gameplay, 4K will be just fine, but we will need, as you saw in the example, to tweak here and there to get a balance between the performance that we get so that we can enjoy the game, but of course enjoy all the graphics and textures that we have available for us. And that is it. Hopefully the video was helpful in some way, and if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.